Welcome to the Fit Small Business Zero training course. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to import customer invoices in Zero. To follow along with me, log into your Zero account now or click the link below this video for a free 30-day trial of Zero. You can also click this link to access our full Zero course and other helpful resources. Let's get started. If you are converting from another accounting software to Zero, then you will most likely have unpaid customer invoices. It is very important for you to create these open invoices in Zero for a couple of reasons. First, you need to ensure that you track money that is owed to you. This is also known as accounts receivable. Also, when your customer does send in their payment, you need to have an invoice to apply the payment to. It is much easier to import customer invoices into Zero as opposed to manually entering them one by one. In this lesson, we will walk through each step of how to import customer invoices into Xero. So from the Xero dashboard, let's go ahead and navigate to Accounts and select Sales. In this screen, we'll go ahead and click on the Import button. And there are basically three steps outlined here for importing your invoices. The first step is to download the invoice template file. So you will click on this link and download that template and save it to your computer. And then step two is actually copying your invoice information into the template. So that could be if you already have the information in another Excel spreadsheet, copy that information over into this template, or you may have to manually enter the information into the template. So we'll go ahead and jump over to the Excel template and discuss how the information should be entered in that template. This is the import template that should have downloaded to your computer. At a minimum, we must complete the fields that are marked in red with an asterisk. So for example, contact name, invoice number, invoice date, etc. These columns are required fields for the import. However, I do recommend that you provide as much detailed information as possible in the other columns so that you don't have to go back and complete any missing information manually later on. In the contact name field, you want to enter your customer's name or the bill to name in this column. Email address. Enter the email address of your contact person at this company. In the next several columns, you want to enter the bill to address in each of these. Be sure to follow the example and separate the street address, city, state, and zip into separate columns as indicated here. If the customer contact already exists in Xero, then you can leave these fields blank unless you want to update this information. In the invoice number field, you want to enter the invoice number for each invoice. This is a required field and it should be a unique number, so make sure that it is so that you do not duplicate the invoice number or the import will not work. Reference. You want to enter any additional information related to the sale in this field. You can use a combination of letters and numbers. Both the invoice date and the due date are required fields. Be sure to use the format that we have here where you've got two digits for the month, two digits for the day, and four digits for the year. Inventory item code. You want to enter the inventory item code for the product or service that was sold. If you have not set up inventory items, Xero will create item codes that do not already exist. I recommend that you set up your inventory item codes prior to importing customer invoices if possible. Please note, if more than one product or service was sold, then you will need to enter each product or service on a separate line with the rest of the required fields. Description. Provide the details of the services and or products that were sold. Quantity is a required field. Enter the quantity here for any products that you sold or enter a quantity of one for services that were sold. Please note that for services, this can represent the number of hours if applicable. If you do not sell products and you charge a flat fee for services, as I mentioned, go ahead and just enter the number one in this field, but do not leave it blank. 
Unit amount, you want to enter the sales price per unit for each product or service sold. Please note this is a required field. For services, this can represent the rate per hour or a flat fee. For products, this will be the price per unit. There is no need to include any dollar signs in this column. Discount. Enter any discounts that appear on an invoice. Please note, do not include the percent sign in this column. Account code. Enter the account code from the chart of accounts that this sale should be categorized to. Please note that this is a required field. If you have not set up account codes, you must do that first before importing customer invoices into Xero. You can click here to access this lesson now. For the tax type column, you want to enter the sales tax rate that should be applied to the invoice. Please note this is a required field in Xero, so if there is no sales tax rate, enter tax on sales 0% in this column. If you have not set up sales tax rates in Xero, I recommend that you do so prior to importing customer invoices. You can access the sales tax lesson here. Tracking options. You want to complete these fields only if you have set up tracking categories to track sales by cost center, department, or location. Otherwise, you can leave these fields blank. For the currency column, if you track sales in multiple currencies, then you want to enter the three-digit code for the foreign currency the invoice is in. If it is not your native currency, Please note, if you have not set up the multiple currency feature, you need to do this first before importing customer invoices in a foreign currency. You can click here to access this lesson. And finally, branding theme. If you set up a custom branding theme or template for invoices, you want to enter the name of the theme in this field. Otherwise, leave it blank and Xero will use the standard branding theme. Before we proceed with the import, I want to share some tips with you to ensure that we have a successful import. Tip number one, to import a credit note or credit memo, you want to enter them in the invoice template with a negative unit price. Tip number two, do not make any changes or rearrange the header row or the import will not work. Tip number three, you can delete any columns that are not required, but I recommend that you leave them since there is no harm in doing so. Tip number four, if your file contains data in the quantity, unit amount, or tax type columns, you must leave the total and total amount columns empty. Zero will make the calculations for you. Tip number five, if you have already set up customer contacts in Zero, be sure to enter the name of the customer contact exactly as it appears in Zero in the customer contacts column. Otherwise, Zero will assume it is a new contact and set it up accordingly. Tip number six, if you have already set up the customer contact in Zero with the address, then there is no need to complete the PO address fields unless you would like to make changes. Any information entered in these fields will override what you have currently set up in Xero. And the final tip number seven, for invoices with more than one line item, each line item must include the same invoice number and currency for multi-currency invoices. Now the next step in the process is to go ahead and click on the browse button to locate our import template that we just created. Once you have selected your import file, you should see it here to the right of the Browse button. Make sure it's got the .csv extension at the end. Now before proceeding with the import, there are a couple of questions that we need to answer to assist Xero in handling contact address details and sales tax. So the first question here is, would you like to update contact details? So as we just discussed, if you have already set up the customer contact in Xero, there is no need to include address details in this template, unless you want to update the information that was previously entered during the setup. So for this option, we'll go ahead and say no, ignore address details. And then the second question, is the unit amount field tax inclusive or exclusive? If you included tax in the unit amount column of the template, then select tax 
inclusive. If you did not include tax in this column, then you would select tax exclusive. In our sales tax lesson, we discussed how to track, pay, and report sales tax. You can click here to access this lesson. After you have indicated your response to these questions, you are ready to proceed with the next step of the import. You click the import button and it will take us to the final review and confirmation of what information will be imported into Xero. So we'll go ahead and click that now. So in this screen, we have a chance to review and confirm the import that will take place once we click this green complete import button. So in this top section here, we have the total number of invoices that will be imported. So for this example, that total is three. We've also got an error message here that says three invoices that have errors and will not be imported. And notice below the reason for these invoices that will not be imported is that the invoice number is not unique. Obviously those must be fixed before those invoices can be imported. So that is definitely something where if you receive an error like this, you want to go back and fix it before you proceed. In the inventory section, Xero provides information about the inventory items that we have included in the template. In our example, we have used existing inventory item codes, but we provided a little bit of a different or unique description on our invoices, which is acceptable. So you'll notice that Xero will go ahead and import these items, but this is sort of just a heads up that um, Xero is giving us in terms of the information that has been included. One other thing to note back up here at the top is that all invoices will import in a draft status. This simply means that the invoices will have to be approved after they have been imported. You can give certain users permission to approve invoices. We will discuss this in more detail in our lesson on how to invite users. Click here to access this lesson. And as I mentioned, you would go ahead and click the go back button, fix your errors, get back to this point where you're happy with the information. And then at that point, and only when you're happy, you want to click complete import. Once you click complete import, Xero will provide you with a message that all invoices have been successfully imported into Xero. That wraps up the lesson on how to import customer invoices into Xero. To access our full Xero course or any of the other lessons in this series, click this link. You can also find a link below this video for a free 30-day trial of Xero. If you have feedback about this course or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe.